for another series of Chronicles of Fiction. This is series two, and we're going to start looking through the MCU timeline. Now, just to clarify, it's the timeline set from the MCU movies and the in-universe actual TV shows. So there won't be any of the Netflix nonsense because they don't count in the overall universe. Since they're Netflix shows and not actual MCU. So, here we go. Before circa 13.800 million BC, the Celestials come into existence. The Dark Elf species originates in the Ginnungagap. The vast primordial darkness that existed prior to the creation of the of the manifest universe where they reigned absolute and unchallenged circa 13.800 million bc the big bang the event that led to the creation of the universe is inhabited by Arisham the Judge. As the universe comes into existence, the six pre-existing singularities are formed. The six infinity stones. Space, mind, reality, power, soul and time. By the cosmic entities. Shortly after that, the Grand Master and the Collector are born. Around 13.700 million BC, Arisham the Judge creates the first sun. Bringing light to the universe. Around 12.8 million BC. Sorry. 12.8. 12 billion 800 million BC. Arisham the Judge creates several planets, planting them with celestial seeds so that more of his kind can be born. He sends deviants to wipe out the planet's predators and encourage intelligent life forming. Four billion, around 4 billion 540 million BC, planet Earth is formed by the Celestials. Around 2 billion 724 million BC, Erishan the Judge chooses Earth to host the Celestial Tiamat the communicator. He plants Tiamat seed in the planet and sends deviants to protect the planet. 80 million BC. The Celestials use the Power Stone to impose judgment upon enemy civilizations. Over time, cosmic beings are overwhelmed by the stone's power and attempt to depose, dispose of it by encasing it in an orb and storing it away in the temple vault on Morag. The celestial eagle, uh, ego is born. After gaining self-consciousness, ego creates layers of matter around himself, eventually forming a new planet over millions of years. Ego also creates a humanoid avatar and explores the universe in an attempt to find life besides himself, but feels disappointed in what he finds. Eventually, he begins planting seeds on many of those on many of these worlds, with the intent of one day using them to absorb all life until only he remains.
75 million BC, deviants evolve to become apex predators and start hindering celestial <laughs> emergencies. Realising that the problem was deviants evolving, Arishan the Judge creates Eternals in the World Forge and makes them incapable of evolution. He implants false memories in them about living on a planet named Olympia and tells them that their mission is to help planets evolve. He sends them to various planets in order to fight the deviants and ensure that celestials can emerge. Cersei and Ajax are made. Around 65 million BC, Cretaceous Pelagenia extinction. A meteorite strikes Earth the effect of which causes the global extinction of non-avian dinosaurs, marking the end of the Cretaceous period. Around 2.5 million BC, a meteorite made of vibranium strikes the east of the continent, which would become, which would come to be known as Africa. It affects the life around it, imbuing, imbuing it with strength, prosperity and mysticism. Around 30,100 BC, a chronicon begins its life. Thousands of years later, it would assume the identity of Enoch. Around 28,000 BC, the Chronicom agent later to be known as Enoch is sent to Earth to study the evolution of the human race. As the time of human intelligence comes, five tribes in East Africa settle on the land where the vibranium meteor struck it and call it Wakanda. Around 10,000 BC, the five tribes of Wakanda live in constant war with each other until one day a warrior shaman named Bashenga receives a vision from the panther goddess Bast. who leads him to the heart-shaped herb. Bashenga ingests the plant, and it grants him superhuman strength, speed and instinct. He becomes king and the first black panther, the protector of Wakanda. While four of the, while four of the tribes agree to live under Bashenga's reign, the Jabari tribe instead choose to isolate themselves in the mountains. Around 9000 BC, a Gaborian royal family led by the Magistrate is exiled from their home planet. They use a Zartan named Zavin, who is a stowaway on the, Gabori uh, on the, on the Gibberim spaceship in order to fulfil a prophecy told on her told on her planet to steer the ship. They crash on Earth and get trapped in the spaceship except for the Magistrate. 7353 BC Buri, the first king of Asgard, is born. Around 5700 BC Agamotto forms the Masters of the Mystic Arts as a league of magic practitioners dedicated to learning magic so to safeguard the earth from dimensional evils. 5244 BC Bor Burison is born to Buri, king of Asgard.
5000 BC. A group of Eternals, including Athena, help a Celestial to emerge out of Centauri, Centauri 6. Athena dies in the process. The Eternals are then sent to the World Forge to have their mind erased and start anew. However, something goes wrong in the process of erasing Athena's memories, causing her to develop Mad Wiry. Arisham the Judge sends ten Eternals named Ajax, Cersei, Kingo, Icarus, Athena, Gilgamesh, Sprite, Makari, Fastos, and Druig to Earth on the Domo with the goal of stopping the deviants and protecting humanity's growth in order to bring upon Tiamat the communicator's emergence as the Domo passes Earth's sun a celestial communication sphere wakes Prime Eternal Ajax up and she tells the others that it's time the Eternals put on their celestial armour and prepare to land on Earth. Icarus looks out of the window onto the planet. Cersei approaches and greets him, remarking on how beautiful the planet is. The pair introduce each other and look back to the planet. Ambush in Mesopotamia Two inhabitants of ancient Mesopotamia are fishing when they hear others from the ledge yelling for them to leave as something is coming. The older man tells the child to run before he gets eaten by the, by a deviant. The boy tries to get away from the danger before optic blasts are fired at the deviant by Icarus, who flies at the deviant and shoots more optic blasts. Another deviant approaches the boy from behind as he watches Icarus leave. However, Makari runs in and saves him. She then uses her super speed to push civilians out of the way of the threat. Kingo charges up the cosmic energy in his fingers before sending two blasts at the deviant. Makari runs in projecting a wave of energy from her speed, which knocks the Deviant back before Kingo delivers a shot that sends it off the shore and into the rocks below. Kingo compliments Makari, who returns the compliment. Gilgamesh charges up the super strength in his fist, delivers a striking punch to a Deviant, this allows Thena to run up from behind and perform a manoeuvre to slice the Deviant's legs with her weapons. She stabs the creature's face multiple times as it attacks her. She then projects an axe and stabs its neck before Gilgamesh punches it once again, then flips onto the Deviant's back and stabs it through the neck. Killing, Gil killing it. Gilgamesh takes Thena's hand as they walk away. In the air, Icarus continues to evade the Deviant's attack while shooting his optic lasers at it. He punches the Deviant into the ground. Civilians look up at the Domo as it removes its cloaking, revealing itself to the people. To the people. Druig, Spite, uh, Sprite, Fastos, Ajax and Cersei arrive on the ground from the Domo. The frightened civilians stand with weapons in hand, but Druig mind controls them to feel safer. Ajax then heals Icarus's shoulder wound and he thanks her. The Eternals then stand in front of the Mesopotamians signifying their arrival. The boy approaches Cersei, who with permission from Ajax, 
takes the stone dagger that was lying on the ground and transforms it into a golden dagger, giving it to the boy. Forty two thirty three BC After centuries of watching humans fight, Druid starts to become overwhelmed by guilt at not being allowed to stop the fighting despite his ability to. By the way, I should have called out a spoiler warning before I started this. I hope many of you have seen these films. Around thirty five hundred BC. In order to raise their chances in the war against their enemies, a rogue Kree fraction, faction visits numerous planets, genetically altering a number of sentient life forms in order to create biological weapons. One of the planets visited is Earth, and the Kree's experiments give rise to an unique, that should be a unique, cast of genetically altered humans. When these humans are deemed ready for war, the Kree expose them to Terrigen, uh, to Terrigen Mist, which activates their special genetic ability of <laughs> Terrigenesis, or Terrigenesis, a process which imbues the human with a power unique to them. They construct the Diviner's containment devices built to hold Terrigen crystals. The diviners will only open if one of the genetically altered humans brings them to a cityscape built beneath the planet's surface, releasing the mist so as to divine those who have the altered Terrigen gene. The Kree hierarchy discovers the faction's illegal activities and the operation is abandoned. The Kree disperse from Earth, leaving behind six diviners. The city and at least one of their deceased kin. These genetically altered humans eventually start to call themselves Inhumans, a powerful Inhuman referred to as Alivius or Alvius, is created by the Kree to dominate the rest of his race, but eventually overpowers his own creators and banishes them from Earth. The humans and other Inhumans, afraid of his powers, banish him to a distant planet through a Kree monolith. Followers of the exiled Inhuman found a secret society and start planning its, ru its return to Earth in order to let him rule it. On the distant planet, the Inhuman finds nine powerful and advanced yet very divided civilizations. The Inhuman consumes all life in these civilizations until they are completely wiped out. Thirty four eighty BC Odin Borson is born to Bor Borson, becoming the heir of, to the throne of Asgard. Thirty four sixty BC, Odin defeats Surfer in battle. The fire demon would then spend nearly five thousand years recovering in Musapelheim. Before his encounter with Odin's son Thor in 2017. 3113 BC. Icarus and Circe begin what will become a 5,000 year relationship. 3000 BC. The Eternals are present as Stonehenge is constructed. 
2988 BC, November 15th, the convergence occurs, the gravitational anomalies that it causes allows the construction of several megalithic monuments, particularly Stonehenge. First Battle of Schwartelheim. The Dark Elves, led by Malekith, try to destroy the Nine Realms with the power of the Ether, the Reality Stone. They are stopped by the Asgardian army, led by Bor, who successfully seized the Ether in an effort to save his race. Malekith kills most of his army and much of Bor's army then puts his remaining forces into a sleep which lasts for millennia. Bor orders for the ether to be hidden in the deepest area possible where no one can access it. Twenty seven eighty seven BC Ajax starts to notice something different about Earth, slowly becoming hesitant to help with the emergence. twenty four seventy six BC The dweller in darkness attacks the peaceful people of Talo, devouring the souls in its path. The dweller in darkness and its soul eaters begin destroying the largest cities in, Tal in Talo. The leaders of Talo send their strongest warriors to an ancient village to prevent the Dweller in Darkness from making it to Earth. The Dweller and his Soul Eaters overtake the army, but the Great Protector joins the fight and gives Talo an advantage. The Protector and Talo lure the Dweller into the Dark Gate and lock it. The people of Talo begin to guard the gate, empowered by the protector's magic. 1881 BC, Fastos teaches humans how to use what he calls fire medicine. Around 1550 BC, the wheel is invented on Earth. 738 BC, Midas is born. Around 716 BC, the Odyssey is published, including the character of Odysseus. 679 BC, Hela Odin's, Odin's daughter is born. So Odin Borson, Borson becoming the rightful heir to the throne of Asgard as his firstborn. 659 BC Subjugation of the Nine Realms As Hela reaches adulthood, she begins to fight alongside her father Odin. Over the years they build Asgard's empire across the Nine Realms and build its glory. 639 BC by the time Odin decides to stop his conquest after realising peace is the true way to unite the Nine Realms, Hela's ambition has grown too large, and coupled with her tremendous powers, she ultimately tries to take the throne, and Odin is forced to battle and imprison his daughter in the realm of Hel after defeating her for the safety of the Asgardians. She was there she was kept for nearly 2700 years until her escape in 2017. Odin would spend the next several centuries burying her history and pretending she never existed. When his next child Thor was born, over 1600 years later, he claimed him to be his actual firstborn. 575 BC 
the Ishtar gate is built. Icarus starts learning the Babylonian language in order to connect with Cersei. Cersei meets a group of settlers who are building their homes in the northern fields of Babylon. The Eternals attend a party in Babylon, but Fastos stays behind and works all night. Battle of Babylon. The next day, Icarus flies after a deviant outside of Babylon. He eventually tackles the deviant, sending it into the ground. Meanwhile, Makari frantically runs to get civilians out of danger, while Sina and Kingo attack the other deviants. Sina decapitates the deviant, prompting Kingo to jokingly tell her that it was his before he finds another deviant to shoot. A deviant charges towards a little girl, but she is saved when Icarus jumps in between the two and grabs the monster's leg. He then turns around and shoots the other leg with his lasers before Makari generates a shockwave that knocks the threat off its feet and into a building. Makari then uses her speed to attack the Deviant countless times in a matter of seconds. Icarus tells the child not to be worried. Meanwhile, Gilgamesh orders the civilians to get inside the Ishta gate before he charges up his fist to hit a Deviant named Ekindu, uh, en- Enkidu. Enkidu. His punch sends Enkidu flipping over him and into the gate. However, Enkidu gets up and throws Gilgamesh far into the distance where he is caught by Makari, Icarus, Sina, Kingo, Makari and Gilgamesh. Then team up. To overpower Enkidu, knocking it down. Enkidu gets up, but Gilgamesh delivers a final hit, killing it. The five Eternals then line up in a row, looking out into the distance for any more threats. After the battle, Ajax stands in the centre of the city and uses her celestial communication sphere to see Arisham the Judge. Who greets her? Ajax reports that the Eternals are completing their mission, and Babylon is the largest city on Earth. Ajax assures Arisham that she respects him, but says that she sees something special about the planet. She suggests that they should forget about the mission for this planet only. However, Arisham interrupts her saying not to get attached or forget her purpose. Ajax assures him that she will not let him down. Jesus Christ. Ajax leaves her conversation with Arisham the judge and walks into the domo, which is parked under the, pl- under the palace. Inside, Ajax suggests that Fastos should get a life after he failed to attend the party the night before. She asks where Cersei is, to which Sprite responds that she is late as usual. Fastos excitedly shows Ajax his new invention, a steam engine. Sprite and Druig protest that is too soon, and Ajax agrees. Cersei finally arrives and asks what she missed, so Fastos then thinks of something more similar, the plough. Cersei suggests that the device would be useful for the farmers. Ajax says that while humanity is advancing slowly, they will discover great wonders.
wrap yourself in, guys. This is a long part of the article. The Eternals attend another party, and Sprite uses her powers to tell the story of how Gilgamesh defeated Enkidu, saying that if people were brave like Gilgamesh, they would go on adventures of their own. Kingo looks on and admires Sprite's storytelling. As the crowd cheers, Sprite joins Kingo, and Gilgamesh sits next to them making Kingo uncomfortable. After the story, Icarus and Thena uh, Icarus asks Thena for a drink, but she refuses. Thena refuses to cower behind walls, but Icarus reminds her to trust Arishim. Thena leaves anyway, and Icarus stops her, saying that it is an honour to fight with her. Thena returns the compliment and leaves. Icarus watches happily as Circe dances with the people. Makari speeds into the party to find Druid. She shows him that she found many artifacts for a trap. Prefer She then catches a civilian stealing one of them and informs him that she should sense his movements. They inform her that the emerald tablet that she has been searching for is a myth. Civilians start fighting so Druid mind controls them even going as far as to make them slap themselves, then hug. Makari stops him, saying he isn't allowed to do that. Druid reveals that he's caught her stealing. They agree to keep each other's rebellious secret. Circe dances with the humans, while Icarus promises not to let his feelings for Circe distract from their mission. Ajax reminds him that he is allowed to live unlit, he is allowed the life and li- allowed to live in life and encourages him to tell Cersei how he feels about her. Okay, the next morning Cersei helps people plant and creates water for the plants. Icarus meets with Cersei in the fields and the two share a look. Icarus watches as Circe helps the humans cook their food. Icarus tries to help but messes up, which gets a chuckle out of Circe. Circe helps a group of humans build a home for themselves. Icarus helps. Icarus watches as Circe has a young girl choose between her two hair pieces. Circe starts working on another girl's hair while Icarus smiles. A young girl braids Circe's hair while Icarus watches a woman put food in a bowl. He turns his gaze back to Circe. Icarus and Circe go out into the mountains. Circe transforms a rock into stone, the colour of Icarus's eyes, and gives it to him. Icarus speaks in Babylonian and tells her that she is very kind. She is impressed that he has learned their language, to which he replies he does it to get closer to her. He then says, I am very, be- I am very beautiful by accident, meaning to say that she is beautiful. Circe laughs and he corrects the compliment in English.
before he reaches for her hand and asks for her love. They kiss before having sex in a cave. The pair say, I love you, to each other and resume kissing. 551 BC, Confucius is born. 544 BC, Sun Wu, later known as Sun Tzu, is born. 513 BC, the Eternals leave Babylon, which they had come to view as, home, as a home. Ajax tells Icarus the truth about their mission, that there is a celestial seed inside Earth, and they are supposed to let it grow and increase the human population, so they can be sacrificed for the celestial's birth. Around 500 BC, the Wakandans begin to construct taller buildings in the main city. 450 BC, the Art of War is first published. In Athens, Bright creates a story about the boy who flew too close to the sun. She bases this story on Icarus, calling it the Legend of Icarus. Athena becomes a legend in Athens, becoming known as Athena, the goddess of war. Oh, ho, ho! so Athena was a robot. <laughs> Thanks, Marvel. 400 BC. The Tao Te Ching is written, including the line... A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. 384 BC. Aristotle is born. Circa, that's around 380 BC. The allegory of the cave is published in Republic. 356 BC, July 21st and 22nd. Alexander III, later known as Alexander the Great, is born in Macedonia. 323 BC, June 10th to 11th, Alexander the Great dies and his remains are placed into a tomb. 322 BC, Aristotle dies. 27 BC, the Roman Empire is founded. Uh, around 16 AD, the elders of Kunlun study how to harness the chi for medical purposes, but five of them wish to use it to gain immortality. These five are banished from the order of the crane mother, and later they found the hand. The hand learns how to use dead dragon bones for the resurrection elixir. and starts conquering East Asia, a group called the Chaste stands in their way, and a rivalry that lasts thousands of years begins, 79 AD, August 24th. The date is the focus of a point of divergence due to time travel by Loki and Morbius and Morbius. It has created another reality. Okay. So we're getting into Loki there. Spoilers. A woman in Pompeii, Italy, walks out of a building into a market. A distant rumbling is heard, causing a woman holding a basket of vegetables to turn around. The woman keeps going about her business as another woman gathers vegetables. People mingle in the market as a woman fills a basket with grain. Goats are taken through the market on a cart. Eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. The hand causes Mount Vesuvius to erupt. This causes a panic as people flee in the nearby town which eventually gets covered in ash 
as Pompeii is destroyed. Around 200 AD, Wakanda thrives as the world around them continues to war, implementing war elephants in battle. 319 AD, the Gupta Empire is established in what would later become India. 400 AD, in the Gupta Empire, Circe and Icarus get married and smile at each other before kissing. The rest of the Eternals look on, excited. 500 AD, or around 500 AD, Arthuric legends are formed. 542 AD. In Korea, a deviant gains access to a bead of cosmic energy which grants the deviant eternal life and the ability to clone itself. It begins killing humans in Korea and becomes a legend as a creature of nine tails named Kumiho. A group of priests begin tracking the Kumiho's movements. Six hundred and fifty AD. A vibranium tool, which would later become uh, come, come into the hands of the Eula tribe of Benin, is forged in Wakanda. Seven hundred and eighteen AD. Catholics initiate a reconquista of Spain. Six, uh, 756 AD. A caliphate of Cordoba rises to power. 785 AD. A building which will later be known as the Mosque Cathedral of Cordoba is built around 819 AD. A chapel is built, the beginning of what would become known as Piazza San Marco, around 950 AD. Massacre of the Valkyrie. After nearly 1600 years of imprisonment, Hera attempts to escape from her prison of hell. Her father and the man who imprisoned her, Odin, sends his army of Valkyries on their flying steeds, at steeds, to keep her at bay. They attempt to prevent her escape, but Hela is too much for them, and she massacres the whole army, save for Brunehild, who is saved by the one of her team, by one of her teammates. Odin intervenes and enters hell. The All Father manages to overpower and re imprison Hela. Brunhild forsakes Asgard and escapes to the junk planet of Sakaar, where she intends to live out the rest of her days drinking and salvaging attempting to leave her old Valkyrie life behind her. 964 AD, Thor Odinson is born to Odin Borson and Frigga, and claimed to be Odin's firstborn child, and thus the heir to the throne of Asgard. He is not told about his imprisoned older sister until the day of his father's death. 965 AD, March 17th. Loki Lefaison is born to Lefay, the king of the frost giants. He is left out to die in Jotunheim. Battle of Tensburg. The frost giants of, Jotun of Jotunheim attempt to conquer Midgard, Earth, starting their invasion of Tensburg, Norway. The frost giants attack people in the town 
using the casket of ancient winters to freeze them. The Asgardians hear of the attack, assemble their army and prepare for battle. The Eternals also participate in the battle, providing assistance for the Asgardian army. Battle of Jotunheim Odin, using the Big Frost, leads the Asgardian army to Jotunheim in order to battle against the Frost Giants and repel their invasion and protect Midgard. The Asgardians force the Frost Giants back to Jotunheim, where Odin discovers an abandoned Frost Giant infant. He adopts the child, names him Loki, and raises him alongside his own son, Thor. He later negotiates a truce with Jotunheim's king, Lothay, forcing the Frost Giants to give up their source of power, the Casket of Ancient Winters. Odin takes the casket and places it in his vault. 18. As a thank you for helping in the Battle of Tensburg, Odin teaches Gilgamesh how to make a secret Asgardian drink. Ooh. <laughs> okay, if you're sure about that, Odin. 968 AD, July 2nd. Zhu Wen Zhu Xu Wenwu is born in China. Nine hundred and seventy-three AD. An eight year old Loki uses his sorcery to turn himself into a snake, enticing his older brother Thor, who is nearly nine, to go and pick him up. Once Thor has done so, Loki turns back into his usual form and stabs Thor, considering it a practical joke. 975 AD. In Asgard, Odin tells his sons Loki and Thor of his success in the battle in Jotunheim. And they were when they were and that they were both born to be kings. 978 AD, July 12th. This date is the focus point of divergence due to a nexus event caused by Sylvia Lafayette. It has created another reality. Uh, so that's for Loki again, the TV show. So yeah. The Rings of Power versus the House of Dragon Loot. Okay. That's no, sorry. Things are peaceful on Asgard. Loki plays with toys in the royal palace of Valactius. 979 AD, January 28th. He play with the casket of ancient winters. Loki freezes Thor using the casket. 988 AD. A ring is made with the family crest of a family which will one day include Dane Whitman, 995 AD. The Cree and Scrolls engage in a war which lasts for over a thousand years. 1014. The Cree and Nova Empires engage in a war which lasts for over a thousand years. 1015. Thanos is born to Swifan and Alas on Titan, November 21st. Zhu Wenwu discovers ten mystical wing rings and uses them to found the ten rings. 1039. Yoshi Minamato is born, 1075. Kimbu Thick is born, or Kimbu Seek, sorry, 1078, the White Tower of what becomes known as the Tower of London begins construction, 1084, October 5th. Having heard rumours of monsters eating the civilians, 
in Hyan Kayo, Ajax sends Makari and Druig to investigate. Makari and Druig hear that the attacks are happening at night, so they decide to stake out. Druig is prepared to mind control anyone who finds them, and Makari plays with birds. The Battle of Hyan Kayo. At night, the two Eternals notice the police calling out a kappa. That's calling out, calling out at a kappa. They find a deviant eating the police officers. They approach the deviant, which lunges at, toward Druig, but Makari runs out, uh, runs in front of Druig, to quickly attack the kappa many times. Suddenly. The Kappa is shot by another man. Makari uses this chance to punch the Kappa, sending it into the distance. Druig recognises the man who shot the Kivian as Yoshi Minamoto, who asks his men if it was an Oni or an Onai. Then asks who Druig and Makari are, having seen Makari's speed, Druig admits that they are not from Hyantayo and offers to help kill the Onai of Minamo- Minamoto keeps their secret. Minamoto agrees to the deal. Makari gives Druid a look, thinking the mind control of Minamoto thinking he contr- he might control Minamoto, but he denies it. A couple of hours later, the Kappa is spotted on the lower part of the river. Makari speeds into, the, into a deviant, knocking him over. When they think it's over, the Kappa makes his move and leaps toward Minamoto. Druig leaps in front of Minamoto and gets bitten, allowing the Kappa to steal his power. Thinking fast, Druig apologises to Minamoto before controlling him to slice Kappa's arm off. Druig releases Minamoto from his mind control. Minamoto is momentarily confused, then asks Druig if he is okay. Druig says that he is alright and asks where the deviant went. Makari rushes Druig to the Domo, where Ajax heals Druig. Six. Druig and Makari return to Hyan Kayo, looking for the deviant. Yoshi Minamoto happily greets them, uh, greets the pair, and reports a lack of sightings. He promises to keep their secret and gifts the two Eternals the are not the Onakiri Maru, otherwise known as the Oni Slayer. He claims that if they hold the sword, everyone in Japan will know they are his friend. He also says they can use it next time they encounter the Kappa. While the Kappa listens to their conversation, Druig asks what Kappa means, and Minamoto tells them it means a child from the river. Druig and Makari scoured the city and couldn't find it. They assumed it died. The Deviant recovers from the damage it had taken the previous night. A bird flies over Hyan Kayo. 1095. Geoffrey of Monmouth is born around 1100.
Okay. Patrakutic asks Izel to leave the fear dimension in order to retrieve the stolen Dialis. What? Hang on. Dialis. And, and find him a host to make him whole. She leaves taking a corporeal form to begin her campaign to unite the Dialis. Die Alice. Die Alice. Izel and her Shrike visit Earth in the hope of bringing other beings like her, including Pachakutik, to the world so they can all inhabit bodies. Izel, the Shrike, Pachakutik, and their story become incorporated into Inca, into Inca mythology. The Inca build the Temple of the Forgotten in Yucatan on the convergence of two ley lines out of the same stone material as the Dialis. It is constructed in honour of Azel a goddess to them, so that she may achieve her mission to unite the Dialis and open a portal in the temple one day. 1109, October 29th. Injong of Goryeo is born around 1138. The literary character King Arthur is introduced. 1142. In Korea, the King Injong of Goryeo orders Kim Bu Sik to record data all over the country. Kim assures Injong that he will obey. He begins his travels and hears tales about Akumiho. Rescue of Kim Bu Sik. Kim arrives at a remote temple and asks the high priest about the Kumiho that he heard about. High priest explains that the Kumiho gained the power of eternal life and is still killing people. As he tells him more, the Kumiho sneaks up behind High Priest and impales him with her claws, killing him and shocking Kim. Kim grabs the Samguk, the, the Samguk Sagi and runs Kim's bodyguard and several warrior monks protect him from the Kumiho as he makes his getaway resulting in their death. Kim runs into a dead end and turns around to see many Kumihos. Suddenly Sprite appears telling him not to fear. She turns Kim invisible to his confusion while Kingo battles the Deviant. Kingo shoots cosmic energy at her only to find it disappeared. Kim explains that it was the Kumiho's tail. Kingo responds with confusion, so Kim explains that the creature absorbs people's life, life forms, and explains that he previously did not believe the creature existed. Kumiho returns with six more clones of herself. Kingo continues to shoot at the incoming deviants as he wonders aloud how a deviant could get the ability to clone itself. He suggests that the deviant absorb things other than humans. Confusing Sprite, Kingo is grabbed by the deviants and buried under them. Kumiho shows Kingo the bead in her hand. 
which Kim reveals is the source of her powers. Sprite turns herself invisible and sneaks up on Kumiho and takes the bead from her hand. Noticing that it radiates cosmic energy, she destroys the bead and therefore Kumiho's power source so it gets off of Kingo and flees. Kingo suggests that they, are, that they follow it but Sprite is amazed by the sight of the Kumiho leaving. Kim gives the two Eternals, the Sun Sagi, Kumiho, a scroll containing all of the research on the Kumiho. He explains that humanity is not ready for something so confusing. Kingo assures him that they'll keep it safe. Sprite uses her powers to show Kim his country's past. With this information, Kim is able to create a very detailed chronicle to be published. 11.45 The Samguk Sagi is published. Ugolino de Conti, later known as Pope Gregory IX, is born. 11.47, February 8th, uh, the siege of the Seljuk Mosque. Hundreds of Ten Rings members, led by Zhu Wenwu, form an army to prepare, prepare for an assault on the Seljuk Empire. Waving their head, waving their banners, Zhu commands his men to remain behind as he approaches the fort. The Seljuks relate by launch, retaliate by launching a flurry of arrows. Zhu unleashes the Ten Rings and easily blocks the arrows as he approaches the opposing army. Using the rings to launch himself, Zhu lands among the Seljuk forces, quickly decimating many of them. Zhu again uses the rings to clear a path for his men and break down the castle's door. Zhu's soldiers charge the castle and claim it for themselves. Around 1150, uh, July 1st, Zhu Wenwu oversees members of the Ten Rings as they train. Uh, uh, circa 1150, Beta Malini is written, including the character of Morgan Le Fay, based on the real witch. 1151, Kim Busik dies. 1162, Genghis Khan is approximately born. 1176, the Giralda is built. 1182, Sakya Pandita Kunga Gyeltsen, later known as Sakya Pandita, is born. 1197, January 8, February 8. A warrior from Asgard's Berserker army defects from Asgard to live on Earth. He decides his weapon, the Berserker Staff, which greatly enhances the wielder's strength, is too powerful for anyone to possess, so he breaks it into three pieces and hides each one in different locations across Europe. April 2nd. The Berserker warrior retrieves food and shelter at a monastery in Ireland where he is venerated as saint, as a saint. He shares his true identity with the priest who have a vow of silence and hides a piece of the Berserker staff in the monastery.
August 26th, the Berserker Warrior hides the second piece of his staff inside a tree in the future location of Trillermark National Park, Norway. December 11th, the Berserker Warrior hides the final piece of his staff in the catacombs under a church in Seville, Spain. 1199, Ferdinand III of Castile is born. 1207, October 1st, Henry III of England is born. 1219, Roger Bacon is born. 1220, a trio of wine, beer and mead is made for the soldiers who fought in Troy. Gilgamesh learns the recipe. 1227, March 19th. Ugolino de Conti becomes Pope, taking on the name Pope Gregory the Ninth. August 18th, Genghis Khan dies. 1231, Juan de Soria becomes the Bishop of Osma. 1233, Ferdinand III of Castile conquers Ubeda. 1236, June 29th. Ferdinand III of Castile overtakes Cordoba, slowly expanding the Reconquista. He makes a truce with the Moors and vows to not stop until all the Hispania is under Christian rule. Lope de, fin de, Fito, de Fitero becomes the Bishop of Cordoba. June 29th. Ajax tells Pope Gregory the Ninth that she and Fastos plan to visit Cordoba and ask to be greeted by someone. 12.38. July 29th. Fastos and Ajax go to Cordoba intending to watch the Mosque Cathedral of Cordoba get consecrated. Fastos admires the artwork by the engineers. Ajak agrees. As they arrive at the mosque, Fastos is surprised at the presence of a bishop, and Ajak reveals that she contacted Pope Gregory the Ninth. They meet with Lope de Fitero and Bishop Juan de Soria, Ajak and Fastos introduce themselves as pilgrims, and while Desoria does not believe them, he respects their privacy. At Ajak's request, Desoria explains the Reconquista and the Defitero and Defitero says they couldn't have or they, they could have used the black powder, but Desoria says they do not know how to use it. Ajax asks why they have it, and De Fitero explains that it is so that the Moors are not the only ones to have it, and they will not learn how to use it before them. De Soria fears that other countries will learn how to use it. Thebians walk through the streets of London. As the Soria leaves, Ajax mentions to Fastos how she worries of the progression of war machines. Fastos is astonished that they already figured out gunpowder. A deviant passes two nights. Fastos talks about showing humans fire medicine. Back in the day, he had no idea it would turn into gunpowder. Fastos wonders if they are doing more harm than good. A deviant that looks like a bear reveals itself, frightening 
the nearby civilians. Ajak reminds him not to interfere. Bathtub claims that's not what he meant, but Ajak stops him, saying that their mission is to protect them from the deviants. Ambushing Cordoba. Meanwhile, a deviant shaped like a bear attacks the city. The bear shaped deviant comes um, torn as a man in an alley. De Fittero interrupts, saying that he didn't mean to eavesdrop, thinking that Fastos was questioning a mission from God. However, they are interrupted by a loud noise, prompting Ajak and Fastos to run off to find deviants attacking. Fastos tells De Fittero to go help the villagers. Ajak wonders how the deviants track them there, and they agree need to calm the villagers down since their running makes it easier for the deviants to pick them off. Ajak heals a wounded villager while Fastos shoots a deviant. Fastos realises that the deviants are targeting them, not the humans and not humans, confusing him. Ajak says that it has happened before in Japan and in Korea. The large bear-shaped deviant attacks and Fastos realises it's not trying to eat them or use its claws. Ajak realises that it grows new limbs and says that it is acting possessed. Suddenly, a knight jumps in and scolds the deviants while attacking them. The deviants then retreat. Fastos thanks the man and asks who he is. The knight says they already know him while removing his helmet, revealing himself as De Fittero. He says that after seeing them fight, he understands why the Pope wanted them there and thanks them. Later De Fittero says he won't reveal anything about their role in the attack. De Soria then meets with them and announces that a big decision was made for De Fittero's future. The Castilians consecrate Castile as the Christian Cathedral of Cordoba Diocese. Lope de Fittero is named Bishop of Cordoba's Diocese. 1245, June 10th, Lope de Fittero dies. 1254, Marco Polo is born. 1255, the Tower of London Jewel House is established. 1316, the Ancient One is born. Circa 1343, Gregory Chaucer is born. 1362, September 30th, Yu Wenwu and his army engage in a battle against enemy forces during the winter. In said battle, Yu destroys a cart holding a large amount of gold. 1402, the Charles Bridge is completed. 1409, October 7th. Odin hides the Tesseract in Tensburg, Norway. 1413, Lorelei terrorises the Nine Realms using her power of enthrallment to enslave hundreds of men. She is eventually defeated by Sith and imprisoned in Asgard's dungeons. 1428 The Triple Alliance, known as the Aztec Empire, is established in what would later become Mexico. 1438 The Inca Empire is fully established and begins its expansion with Azel and Pachacutic as part of their mythology. 1452 April 15th, 
Leonardo da Vinci is born. Leonardo da Vinci. Fourteen sixty-nine, Ferdinand the Second of Aragon, and Isabella the First of Castile get married, uniting Spain into a single country. May third, Niccolo Machiavelli is born. Fourteen ninety, the Vitruvian Man is drawn. Around 1490, 1507, April 13th, a painting portraying the Virgin and Child is finished in Spain. 1519, February 10th, the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire begins. May 2nd, Leonardo da Vinci dies. 1520, Gilgamesh and Athena follow a series of of clues left behind by the deviants in Iberia. A ship with Gilgamesh on it is attacked and destroyed by a deviant, leaving Gilgamesh stuck in the ocean. Thena makes a deal with a captain to be able to go find him. Thena helps a Portuguese captain patrol through the South Atlantic Ocean. The captain is astonished that Thena knows which current to take Takian takes should ha take an and should have a space there says that the king will make them rich if she manages to reach the new world Thena reminds him that she does not want the gold just their ship Thena reminds Thena finds a shipwreck off in the distance. She wants to find at least one survivor. But the captain remarks that the ship was torn into pieces. Suddenly, a crew member yells that there is a man aboard. When they look over, they find Gilgamesh on the shipwreck. He notifies them that the Deviant killed all the men before leaving. Athena is confused on why it did not attack Gilgamesh and realises it's hiding. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to have to bookmark this and carry on next time because it's such a long section. So join me then and we'll carry on. And until then, thanks for watching.